Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome. I am Dana Malone, your Oklahoma Cannabis Paralegal, coming to you today from Bridie and Associates, where I am a cannabis paralegal to Isaiah Bridie. Um, today's topic is my meeting with the fire marshal's office yesterday. And I got a lot of information that um, is going to help me help you guys. And I also, it was a very, very long meeting. And I went there with a packet of your guys' questions. There were a lot of them. There was a lot of duplicates. So, you know, everybody's question, if it could be answered, it was answered and I will go through those next. First and foremost, the fire marshal's office gave me a flow chart. I'm going to post this so that everybody can see what this flow chart is. Truthfully, I have not read it yet uh, because I have been so busy, but it's got the entire, how everything should flow when you're filing for your permit. And again, I will post this. I will post this on YouTube. I will also post this on Facebook. So everybody will have an opportunity to have this. All right, um, I'm gonna start. <laughs> We have um, a lot of questions about utility buildings. Um, do I have to have my utility building permitted? Well, there is a permitting that is a U permit and your utility building is up to 5,500 square feet. This includes hoop houses that have no water, no HVAC, and no lights. Once you introduce lights into a hoop house, then it becomes a different um, category. So um, up to 5,500 square feet on hoop houses without water, without lights, and no HVAC, that is considered a U classification. A U classification is U, a utility building. Um, and that does not go through the entire permitting process. You still have to follow this, but it's, from my understanding, it's a little bit easier with the hoop houses that do not have these things. Um, an F1, classification uh, is up to 8,500 square feet. Um, 5B, or it starts at 85. I'll have to get back to that. My, my notes there are a little bit sketchy. All right, there's been a lot of questions regarding sprinkler systems. Any building 12,000 square feet or larger, 12,000 square feet or larger requires a sprinkler system. There are some caveats. If it is a two-story building that is less than 12,000 square feet, you will have to have a sprinkler system. No getting around it. Um, an F1, 12,000 square feet or larger, requires a sprinkler system. Um, now, if you've got multiple hoop houses, whether they are um, considered you because you don't have lights, plumbing or any of the other stuff. And it's when you introduce lights that makes it 
change classification or you have more than 5,500 square feet on the hoop houses. Now you can have three hoop houses and if they don't total 5,500 square feet between the three and they don't have lights, you're still under the U classification, if that makes sense. So you add your um, square footage in your hoop houses together and if it is more than 5,500 square feet, even without lights, um, then it changes classification because of the size. It will go up to an F15B or an F12B. Just depends on what you have. So, I know it sounds crazy and it does, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, I'm ordering the IBC today um, so I can become proficient in um, the terminology and all of that stuff. Um, so, the um, sprinkler system is required on any building that is 12,000 square feet or larger or is two or more stories. So, um, fire alarms, okay. There was some miscommunication to me originally. Um, fire alarms are required to be monitored by a monitoring service unless, well, they're required and they're required to be um, monitored unless you have a fire hydrant on site no fire alarm is required now if you've got a six inch water pipe within four within a thousand feet of your building any building on the property then you will be required to have a um, fire hydrant put on your property. Um, if you do not have that six inch pipe, uh, water pipe on your pro within a thousand feet of your building, then you will be required to have a um, fire system, fire alarm system as, and it must be, have, be a monitoring, must be monitored. Um, so, we're going to go over to your questions. Like I said, I have got so much information running around in this head. I'll be able to answer questions, but what I need to tell you guys, it's just all jambalaya right now. So, um, my first question is indoor grow, new red iron metal building with closed cell foam insulation. This person understands that he needs to spray paint. Now the fire marshal made sure I tell you, you don't put spray paint on the foam insulation, the cell phone insulation, it closed cell foam insulation. There is a particular paint and it's called, and I wrote it down because I, into, intermescent something of that nature that's what goes that's the type of paint and you can use a sprayer to spray it but it is not a spray paint okay so he wanted me to make sure that I clarified that um, that you need to put spray paint over that foam for all exposed areas Above our rooms, we want to isolate the rest of the open area with four by eight sheets of some type of material, such as FRP panels. We don't want to use sheetrock or anything that might grow mold. Would FRP panels pass his or her inspection for that purpose? The answer is if it's done properly. Um, FRP, uh, it has to have a specific rating. There's, um, I think they said, there's B and C ratings, and it must have the appropriate rating. 
um, and it needs to be a thermal barrier. It needs to have a thermal barrier code corridor outside of grow area. So they don't want the fire to follow you when you exit. So um, another question, um, if building plans are submitted now, what is the state fire marshal's estimate on when they can do our inspection? You must have your permit, then you must call for inspections. They will not just come out. You have to schedule the uh, inspection with them. So that's good to know because we did not know that. Are all grow rooms required to have a commercial fire alarm? Yes, as we've just discussed, if there is a six inch pipe, water pipe, that is within a thousand feet of your building, then you must have a fire hydrant. If you do not have that six inch uh, water pipe within a thousand feet of your building, then um, you will be required to have a monitored fire alarm system. Um, let's see. Do you have to have a fire suppression system in a building that is less than 12,000 feet? No, unless, now again, all of these things have caveats. So, um, and it depends on your particular situation, but as a rule, no, unless it's a two-story or three-story or four-story building. You know, if it's more than one story, then it will definitely under 12,000 square feet have to have, um, have to have a fire suppression system. Also, are you allowed to use black and white plastic on your walls? No, there is no fire retardant plastic that they are aware of, and you cannot use plastic as room dividers or to cover your walls. Um, next question, can they give us the inspection forms they will be using? All right, they use the plan review. Um, checklist, I mean, they go through your packet. They check everything. You have that. Everything has to be, you can use this, which is the checklist and or you can use your permitting packet. Those are your checklists because they're going to check that everything that you, every piece of information that you gave them is correct and is done properly. It's real easy. Um, I mean, it's not easy, but that's how, that's what they do. They don't have, like OMMA has an inspection form that they come in and check, 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 check. This is what they use. They use your work product. They use your application. And they also make sure, I took some packets in yesterday and I didn't do them. Someone in our office did. And they didn't fill this part out correctly. So everything was denied. You will, if you do not fill this out correctly, your application will be denied. This is just the checklist before you, you know, I mean, this is what you need to do. If it is, if you do not provide something in this box, these boxes here, you either check it or you put in a plain and simple. If there is one box not checked, it's rejected. So also, on the, um, I think I'm missing one page. You have to have all the information. Um, and if it's not, everything needs to be filled out. And if it's not applicable to you, then it needs to have an NA in there. It's, it's real simple, guys. Um, 
they don't know. They're not coming in and inspecting some, a new build. They're coming in behind and reverse engineering everything. They're not going to take and sh you know uh, shut you down unless again you have a death trap for a building. They are going to work with you. I promise you. They've made that very clear to me. I not only met with the fire marshal, I met with two of the guys that do these. They review these and make sure that they're complete. Um, they don't want to hurt your business. And they are out there to help. But they also said that based on what they're getting in, you guys aren't doing it correctly. So they're, they're having to reject a lot more than what they anticipated. Now, there are people that are hiring architects and, and engineers and, and stuff to do that, but you don't have to do that. Seriously. I mean, he went through, they went through everything with me yesterday. And this is something I'm going to become proficient at. And I think I'm comfortable with what their deal is, but I also have a phone number that I can call and get my questions answered. So I am more fortunate than the majority of you. So, but again, your, uh, your checklist is your, is your inspection sheet. Your application is your inspection sheet. All right. If there are code violations found that require extensive work or work in a clean area with live plants, what is the time frame allowed to bring it up to code? Say a room needs to be rewired or partitions removed in a flower room, will it be a 30-day reinspection? Do they expect us to contaminate a whole room of flower to work on some code that was fine for the last five years so we can hurry up and correct it in 30 days. Okay, if they find a something that needs to be corrected when they do their inspection, you're going to get 30 days to submit your plans and you're going to get 180 days to commence the work. They do not expect you to leave your plants in that room. You can move them to another room. It's, they don't want to harm your plants. You know, they're doing their job because this has been a requirement all along. There was failure on OMMA's part. There was failure on the county's part. But you know, it, there's no reason to, to start throwing blame anymore. This has always been a requirement. So we just need to pull up our boots and just work through it systematically. Um, but again, you have 30 days to submit your plans for the, the work for the violation or, or not necessarily violation that needs to be fixed and 180 days to commence the work. Um, let's see. Now, I got a question here that says, what qualifies as a site plan and what, and an official blueprint? You do not have to have an official blueprint. You can draw your own blueprint. You can have your blueprint drawn. As a matter of fact, I'm ordering the tools today in order to draw blueprints for our office. Um, because they showed me, and, and I've got a little bit of experience doing it. Um, so uh, by the end of this, I'll have a lot of experience doing it. And it says, what qualifies as a site plan? You know, they showed me what they were but they wouldn't give me a definition because everybody's is a little bit different. Some people draw their own. So it, it just depends on your situation. All right. 
We have a greenhouse with light depth gravel floors and a floor and a hoop house, industrial plastic and aluminum frames, and both were wired by certified electrician. We have zero employees and we are not open to the public. We have a little less than 3,000 square feet in both. Our county has zero building codes. We told them what our plans were. Okay, this is not actually a question. So here's, here's the deal. You're still subject to the same building permits and same inspections and same requirements as everybody else. Um, you have a little less than 33,000 square feet in both of your hoop houses, but because I'm presuming there is um, lights have been introduced, you are going to fall under the uh, F15B. So you're still going to have to comply. You're going to have to have a door on each end. You're going to have to have exit signs. Um, so that's a requirement. So, and you may have to have a fire hydrant or you may have to have a monitored uh, fire, uh, fire alarm system. All right. Now that the county tells us we must consult with the state fire marshal's office, it was good enough for the county for the past five years and now it's up to the state. We weren't, why weren't we told that five years ago? Actually you were when you got your certificate of compliance and your county issued a letter. It was in that letter that you should consult with the Oklahoma State Fire Marshal's office. Um, you file, it says, what regulations do we follow, fall under? You fall under the Oklahoma State Fire Marshal's regulations. So unfortunately, there is no one in Oklahoma because these are businesses, and, and that's in reference to the previous question, um, the, that doesn't have any employees. This is what the fire marshal's office told me regarding this question. It doesn't matter whether you have employees or not. You are a business. You are a commercial business holding commercial licenses. And because you hold those commercial licenses, you must, uh, comply with the certificate of occupancy requirement. So, and they weren't being mean about it, and I'm not either. I'm just being matter of a fact. Um, that's just how I am. Question nine, so not, so what if you, you have no employees and you're not open to the public? This is the same thing. Um, this is not a public building in any shape or form. Are you not, therefore, a hazard to the public? I mean, what I do on my private property is no one's business but mine, right? Well, no. You hold commercial licenses. You are operating a commercial business. And because you are a commercial business holding commercial licenses with OMMA and OBNDD, you are required to meet state commercial code. I would also ask the fire marshal under what authority, okay, they would not answer this one. What authority does the OBNDD have to make the safety, safety inspections? Their role is just to make sure people are legit, etc. Actually, that's not OBNDD's role. They are to make sure that the businesses are run properly, not illegally, and they are law enforcement. So um, this is not something to do with the fire marshal. This is a question for OBNDD or OMMA or your state legislature. All right, do we have to have a sprinkler system if we are only 1,200 square feet? The answer is no. We already, I already discussed this earlier. You have 12,000 square feet or less, or under 12,000 square feet, you do not have to have a sprinkler system unless you are two or more stories. So if you're, a, if you have a second floor, third floor, whatever, if you are more than one floor, one story, then you do not have, a, you do have to have 
a uh, sprinkler system if you are more. <coughs> but if you are not, you are a single story, 1,200 square feet or less than 12,000 square feet, you do not have to have a sprinkler system. <coughs> okay. And then the next question, minimum square footage requiring a sprinkler system, 12,000 square feet. Okay. Do hoop houses need monitored fire alarm as well? I, I discussed this earlier, but we'll go ahead and talk about it again. Depends on if there is a fire hydrant on the property. Now, you will be required to put a fire hydrant on the property if you have a six inch water pipe within a thousand feet of your building. If you do not have a six inch uh, water pipe within a thousand feet of your building, you will be required to have a monitored fire alarm system. All right. Um, if I have a smoke detector that sends me a notification to my phone, would that be considered a self-monitor fire alarm? That would be considered a self-monitor fire alarm. However, again, I was given misinformation in the beginning or I misunderstood in the beginning. I don't think I did, but I think that it got mixed up. There was something. All, all businesses that do not have a... Um, fire hydrant within 400 feet of their business must have a monitored fire alarm system. Okay, it's really at the discretion of the fire marshal. When we were building and they did our inspection, we had a 5,000 square foot room. We read in our county Anything over 10,000 square feet required a sprinkler system, but we were told we had to have one for 5,000 square foot room and that the 10,000 square foot written was at their discretion based on what the room is used for. So we have to have sprinklers installed. That's very possible. If you've got a processing or you're, you've got CO2 going or you've got hazardous chemicals going in there, they may require that. Um, Again, we're talking about bare bones um, previously, but if that's what they require, um, it, it sounds like you've already dealt with the fire marshal. So if that's what they told you, unfortunately, then that's what you will have to do. Um, also, what is the time frame slash inspection wait time after you submit paperwork? That is unknown at this time. I saw the offices where everything comes into. There are hundreds. And each of those the, uh, applications with the plans that come in must go and be reviewed by um, a person, a human. And so once they um, have reviewed it and found that you have everything you need, um, you know, then it starts the process your permit, first you will get your permit. Again, I will be posting this. This will tell you the entire flow. But don't forget, once you have your permit, when you're ready for inspections, you have to call and schedule the inspection. All right, um, and it depends on the quality of work you submit. You know, like I said, and this is a direct quote from the fire marshal. It depends on the quality of work you submit. If your work is missing documents, um, it's not complete, then, you know, um, it, it's going to hold you up. So, how do we prove we are actively seeking the COO? Submit the application and wait for their response to be Put on the uh, put them on the list. Okay, we discussed this yesterday. OBNDD is not uh, on the same page as the fire marshal. Is they're still working to develop a plan with OBNDD, but apparently OBNDD is um, 
not having their suggestions. So, and OBNDD is not responsive as to what it is they exactly want. So we're all up in the air on that. I personally will continue submitting the packet, the, the everything that I submit for the permit with the OBNDD renewals to show that we have, you know, have started that process. Um, I, I may talk to them about getting a letter. I don't know. I know if I go in and I hand deliver this, they stamp it um, and they stamp their copy. I may have them stamp my copy. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I probably will run in once a week and, and do this. I, I just haven't figured that out yet. Um, but he's going to let me know once they develop a deal. All right. Does the site plan have to be an official blueprint done by an architect or someone like that? No. However, it does need to be to scale. I can't stress this enough. It must be to scale. And what does that mean? Well, if you've got your scales down here saying it's quarter an inch you know, a quarter inch equals so many feet, it better be a quarter inch equals so many feet. Because if it's not, it's gone. They, they're going to reject it. Okay. What's required for hoop houses? Do electrical wires need to be in conduits, metal or plastic? Do electrical outlet boxes need to be metal or is plastic okay? How big is the fire extinguisher and how far apart? One at each end. Do we need a water reserve tank for fire truck if there is a fire and no fire hydrate, hydrated nearby? If yes, how many gallons? Do we need doors on both ends? If a light, is a light up exit sign required? If we only have two hoop houses, do they need to be 15 feet in between if there's room on the other side for fire truck to get to. Okay, this is a lot of questions. Um, the electrical boxes and the they the con uh, says do electrical wires need to be in conduits? You need to file follow the electrical. It, it must be done to code. So if the code requires that it needs to be in conduits then it needs to be in conduits. You can use plastic or you can use metal, according to them. Fire extinguishers, every 75 feet of travel, and this is for all your businesses. Um, you do have to have depend, the two doors would be required, would, would depend upon how big your hoop houses are. Doors, depending on size of building, exit signs, uh, because you do have electric in there, um, may be required depending on occupancy load. So, as far as 15 feet in between, that is an IBC requirement. And if they're not, if there's not 15 feet, you're going to have to put some kind of firewall. That's if this is more than 55, your, your hoop houses, your two hoop houses, no, yeah, are more than 5,500 square feet, I believe. I'll double check on that. But um, you may have to have a firewall in between them. So, do doors have to swing to the outside? It depends on the occupant load and or the hazard of the door swinging whichever way. Um, if my spray foam insulation meets or exceeds the flame spread index and other properties in the IBC, do I still have to cover it with drywall or other acceptable covering in all areas of the building? I've read the code and it seems a bit contradictory in this regard trying to figure out if I need to cover my ceilings with spray foam on them, as well as some storage areas. Okay, this is where 
they, they talked to me about the intumescent paint coat. You do not have to cover it with drywall, but the, um, the foam has to be covered with intermescent, intumescent paint coat. Well, I will learn to say that word. Um, you do not have to cover your ceilings with spray foam. Spray foam is not a requirement, believe it or not. It's not a requirement. So, how many people are in line now for the state fire marshal? What is the wait time for inspections? What is the cost for them? I was told last week, $1,200. Okay. This one caused a chuckle amongst them regarding the $1,200. Okay. The cost of the inspections are covered in your permit fee. You get three inspections. Any inspections after three will be charged at whatever rate, because it depends on if they're drive time, all of that. It, it, you don't want to go over three. Um, can we get a template examples of other inspections? No. Um, that was just their answer. No. What about greenhouses that were built years before medical marijuana and are not 15 feet apart? Will they be forced out of business? No, you just must comply with code. If they're not 15 feet, you may have to put in a firewall. What, do you, what does that mean? You know, we'd have to look at the IBC, but you just have to put in a firewall between them. Um, so, see, there is a general code that two adjacent structures shall not be less than 15 feet apart by the, okay, nothing. There's actually no question there. Um, the next one is really not a question. It's just a statement. Do we have to hang sheetrock over closed cell spray foams? As I said, a lot of these questions are duplica duplications of previous questions. No, not if you don't want to. However, the closed cell spray foam must be covered at bare minimum with intumescent paint. You do not have to cover it with any other product other than intumescent paint. Okay, that one I've already answered. All right, this question is, will this be done by the fire marshal's office or a third party? We're presuming the permitting and the inspections, it will be done by the fire marshal's office. The way I understand the current process goes is you submit your plans, get your permits, code inspections, etc. Then the fire marshal signs the COO. Correct. That is correct. Um, they don't do the electrical and structural inspections. That's why you have to contact, you know, there's no, they will look at your structure and if there's something wrong, if they feel that there's, it's a death trap, then they may have you fix something. But the electrical, you have to have someone come in and um, a, a, a licensed electrician come in and write a letter, do an inspection, write a letter, and that must be submitted with your packet. And it, stating that, you know, he they need to state that you are in code. Also for plumbing and your HVAC. Again, we're reverse engineering everything. So, um, we are, okay, I've already, again, that somebody's wanting the inspection forms. There are no inspection forms. Your checklist for your application and your application is your checklist. 
Can you use a portable building for an indoor grow? Does it have to have a foundation? Foundation is not required, however, it must be fastened in some way to something to prevent it from blowing away or turning upside down in Oklahoma winds. So that's what they told me. Um, okay, this was a good question. I do have a question that you may be able to help with. We have been here almost four years in Hartshorn. We went through local channels, AHJ, -A -A in the very beginning. Of course, like so many others, we were told there were no codes in this city, county requirements. We did the best we could do with what we had. Now, the COO requirements we are working on to stay in business. My question is, when we finally get our COO inspection by the state fire marshal, and we do not have sprinklers in place by then, will we be shut down? No, you will not be shut down. You will be given, you will be told to correct the, the, the issue. They will give you 30 days to submit your plans, and then you have 180 days to commence the work. They are working with people. Okay. Um, so you'll be able to carry on your business. Um, but I highly recommend you put in a fire, uh, a monitor fire alarm system um, in the meantime. The portion of the building that we are we have is approximately 30 square 36,000 square feet. That is more than the 12,000 square feet. So you definitely would be required. We have been in operation for almost 4 years. Our city did not require okay. All right, but that's what they told me. They will just just start working on it. I know it's a lot of money, but just do the best you can. Will they issue a COO on a shipping container as long as it meets electrical and mechanical standards? Yes. However, you must provide all required documents for the permit. The doors may need to be modified. It just depends on what your setup is. But yes, they will, if you have a shipping container and it meets electrical and mechanical standards, uh, you can obtain a COO. But again, there's caveats. It depends on the condition and, and all of this, you know, all, all the things. But yes, they do that. Okay, that's all of the questions. I will get my brain unjumbled from my meeting yesterday and I will figure out, <coughs> I apologize for that. I got allergies this morning, but I will get another video going in the next day or two to cover that information. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I will be posting this in the comments. This is the flow chart. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I will be put it, posting it on YouTube and I will be posting it as well on um, Facebook. So um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. If you have, wherever you've seen this video, or you can reach out to our office at 918-900-0470. Again, my name is Dana Malone. I will be more than happy to take your call. Um, if I am busy, they will take a message and they'll make sure that it gets to me and I will call you back, guaranteed. Um, if you have a legal issue and you need to talk to the attorney, 
you can call 918-900-0470 and Sarah can get you on his calendar. His name is Isaiah Brighty. And then we have an associate attorney. Her name is Kaya Kennedy. So from Brighty and Associates and your Oklahoma Cannabis Paralegal, I hope you have a wonderful day. I gotta get to work. Talk to you later, bye.